with some photos, some uh, limited editions of photographs of, of my time with John. Um, as they call it back then, the lost weekend. <laughs> and obviously it wasn't so lost when you start to figure out all the stuff that went on in that time period. In fact, he worked more than he ever did on, in his solo career. Taking the pictures, the photos, mm -hmm. did you realize that someday that you might do something with them or was it just for fun at that time? You know, it's funny because when John started to look at my photos, I was, I was just, a, it's like a hobby. And I love photography, so I started taking pictures. And John would say to me, after he saw his photos, that the way I was taking them, he says, you know, it's something, he, he said, he kept saying to me, I've never seen myself, I've never seen myself in this type of lighting. I really like the way I look, because he was very particular. And he let me take photos of all the time. And there is one photo that's, I don't know if I, uh, I don't think I have it here. I'm not sure. It's one with the dogs, that he has the dogs, but it's in the book. And he loved that picture so much, he asked if he could use it for the single of Imagine in Europe. So, which of course I said, you can use that. Um, maybe I should have charged. Uh, just say, wow, I've never seen photos like this. And I never thought about putting it out on display. But it started, people were coming, they, this should go out. People should see what he looked like back then. Because everybody thought of him as this disruptive person out there, and drunken and thrown out of places. But that's not the way it was. The stories have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, were you ever there when he had an inspiration to write a song and you saw it, he said it? You know? A lot. Is, can you think of one? Like, yeah, what, his, his only number one single, which is whatever gets you through the night, okay? He, he loved TV. And he loved the, the advent of cable TV had just started happening. And he was watching this guy called Reverend Ike. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you know. Agree, that's yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Reverend Ike. Uh, and he's, you know, guy's pacing back and forth on television, two in the morning. And he's going, you need money? You gotta ask for it. You know, and this is one of these slick things. And he said, it's whatever gets you through the night. And that phrase stuck with John. And he always had... A yellow pad and pen paper whatever over his head and he always had it so that he can write down phrases and he liked that phrase and he wrote it and he put it and he put it down and from that obviously he wrote the song and from whatever gets you through the net which was his only number one in his lifetime so he, he managed to get one. How do you feel what, what is your role how do you feel about <clears throat> being part of this history I don't know why they defined it, except the fact that I was his companion, his girlfriend. And a lot of people don't want to say that because it will disrupt somebody else. But that's the fact are the facts. And so Yoko wasn't there. Uh, Yoko called us all the time, so she was not in, in you know, sitting all by herself. Uh, she called us all the time. She must have called about... 20 times a day. I was the one who told her that, you know, when uh, they decided to do the Elton John, you know, John was going to get up to do the Elton John concert. I actually spoke to her and told her. So she knew about this. Um, there's a lot of things. And, you know, it wasn't... So for them to get back together, and that's another, there are a lot of myths. They did not get back together in November. It wasn't until the following year. She came to the concert. You know, it's just... It's, it's just Whatever, and of course, there's videos out there of Number Nine Dream and the, and her face mouthing the word of John, but it's actually my voice, so I sing on that. So, you know, it, and it's just the way it is. So I'm just trying to correct a little bit of history on the way. Thank you. You're welcome. If with any personal story that you feel comfortable, you know, sharing that you're not revealing things you don't want to, any little story about. Everyday life. Oh, everyday life. Well, I mean, with, with, with John. The man, the man would wake up at eleven o'clock. I would have his cup of coffee ready, and he didn't have sugar in his in his cup of coffee. He had half and half, um, and he would like to read the New York Times. And on Mondays, we get the delivery of all the 
rag newspapers like the Daily Mail, the News of the World from England, all the, all the rag papers, because he still wanted to, to, you know, he was, he was English, and so he, he wanted to read that as part of tradition, and that's what he used to do. We used to have that sent over to us, so on Mondays was reading that, and he would read all the music magazines, Billboard, Record World, Cashbox, and where the charts and what everybody was doing. But I'm going to turn it off before I become a <laughs>